This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Stick around to the end of the video to learn how you can get one month of Skillshare Premium for free. Alright, welcome everyone. My name is Kurt. I'm a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at this cover that I colored by Matt Smith for Heart Eyes number one. I'm going to look at the time lapse that I exported from Clip Studio Paint for this. So, enjoy. If you have questions, leave them in the comments, as always. So, uh, this particular cover I had a real uh, blast with. It was a ton of fun. I basically decided to sort of split the entire thing into a uh, greenish teal foreground and a very warm red background where this big monster is. And so what you'll see throughout is after I've established that initial, you know, separation of the planes in the front and the back, I pretty much stick to that plan and all of the details are just supporting that, you know, so... But, uh, but at, th at this stage, I am detailing the, uh, the building there. You'll notice that the colors uh, start to get slightly brighter toward the top. I'm trying to sort of subtly pull your eye toward the center. And uh, on the character, uh, when I did this cover, I actually didn't know. Uh, there, there wasn't any established uh, colors for this character yet, and... The book they sent for reference he wasn't uh, colored in yet and so uh, I decided to just avoid local color completely the, the monster is actually the only thing that is the uh, he's bred in the book and uh, everything else is supporting that <laughs> on, on this cover so uh, but uh, but you can see I'm kind of concentrating the brightest values you know right near the the main character's head uh, and you'll see that throughout. Um, I will actually uh, eventually darken the background behind them a little bit too uh, to help uh, increase the contrast even more. And uh, But it was I, I felt like I learned a lot on this cover because there was so much detail, uh, especially in the, the monster back there, and uh, trying to get you know each one to have some depth and uh, highlights and and what color that all needed to be. It was a fun uh, little experiment to try to try to figure out. But uh, you can see here I'm going in and darkening up, adding some shadows. And I, I, I end up in this one with sort of a purple and blue sky at the very top. Right now it's orange, but that's going to change. The orange was fighting with the eyes. And I didn't want... I wanted those eyes to be one of the only things that was that yellow-orange on the entire cover. Because... When you have one color that is more scarce than the rest, it, it will tend to pull forward, you know, in the reader's eye. And so by having those eyes, you know, they're small. I mean, they're physically small as far as the amount of space they take up in the cover. And so that really means that in order for them to stand out, there needed to be something really unique about those eyes. And so by having them be the only thing that color uh, pretty much on the entire canvas, then uh, then that sort of accomplishes that uh, some of this is very subtle I know you guys can't really see uh, maybe follow exactly where I am but there's just a lot of detailing on all of those little suckers on the tentacles at this point and trying to make that work and uh, I also tried to uh, you know the further back we get and the further up we get away from the character again I was leaning toward darker leaning toward less contrast the further away we get from the character, which is why you see uh, toward the top of the screen, there's, there, you won't, when this is done anyway, there won't be quite as much contrast near the top. Most of it's going to be near the bottom. Uh, I was using some overlay layers in here to sort of do big value shifts in these uh, tentacles. If I wanted to brighten them, uh, an overlay layer works well for that for me. And uh, all of that little, uh, those little specular highlights you see me adding now, those little thin, uh, little uh, reflective lights, those go a long way to, to make them look shiny, to make them look kind of slippery and wet. And uh, in, anytime you have those little small, uh, thin specular highlights, that, that usually does a pretty good job of making something look like it's slick. And that's kind of what I was going for here. I had sort of given myself, you know, some guide rails with that red. It's like I knew I didn't want it to lean too much into orange, so that's kind of a limiting factor in the hue. 
you know, there's a relatively narrow range of value where that's going to work. You know, I know I didn't want it to be, I didn't want it to get too bright because obviously that would maybe uh, uh, conflict a little bit with what was going on in the foreground. And uh, also didn't want it to get too uh, dark, you know, of course, because that can sometimes cause some print issues. So uh, by having that little range of that dark purple to those brightest reds and pinks, sort of gives you some uh, some training wheels on where your palette needs to stay. So I'm going to pay some bills here real quick with a one minute ad. I'll be right back. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. I intend to launch a new drawing and painting channel soon, and I still have no idea what I'm doing on YouTube. So I decided to check out Marquez Brownlee's class called YouTube Success. Script, shoot, and edit with MKBHD. I'm a huge fan of his YouTube channel. His skills are obvious. I found it to be a great class focused on exactly what I was looking for. In my case, how a pro YouTuber handles videos. Of course, there are thousands of classes on a huge variety of subjects with curated lists at the top classes in all the major categories. So you can jump right to the best classes right at the start. It's easy to find what you're looking for. You could pick up some new Procreate skills, get a better grasp of Clip Studio, learn some cool guitar licks, build a website, learn about logo design, there's literally something for everybody here. So the first 1,000 people to use the link or my code color with Kurt will get a one month free trial of Skillshare at the link in the description. So thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Learn some cool stuff and support this channel at the same time. Now back to the video. And we're back. And I am still detailing suckers. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Uh, but this was, this was a lot of fun. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Matt Smith's work. Uh, he did a book called Lake of Fire with Nathan Fairburn that I was uh, very impressed with, one of my favorite books. And so it was really cool to get asked to even uh, work on this. So, But as you can see, I, I, I lightened up that background a little bit more. Uh, there's a very subtle uh, layer on top that's affecting uh, the lines and the colors and everything. But... It's kind of hard to tell at this stage because it was it was pretty subtle. Uh, but so now you can see that the only place that I am mixing the red of the background with the green of the foreground is on the character, uh, on the character itself, and a little bit on those metal things sticking up. There's some red in there again to sort of minimize the contrast between um, the uh, foreground, and the background there, where those metal bars are but then not on the character. So we're coming up to the end of this one. Uh, thank you so much for watching. As always, go ahead, click buttons, you know, click a button somewhere, click a light button or subscribe button or some kind of button. And uh, check the description for discounts on my coloring courses. And uh, I think it's time for the final with all the design work uh, by Tim Daniel. Uh, Tim picked a perfect set of colors for these logos. The only color that I left that wasn't heavily used, yellow. Everything else in the rainbow is in here. And so uh, I, I messaged him and I was like, man, like this was like an alley-oop in basketball. This is Gary Payton to Sean Kemp right here. But by leaving that yellow as uh, a unique color, it almost looks like the logo is the light source, which was not intended, but I liked anyway. So again, thank you all for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports this channel. I'd love to keep it going, so check those links in the description. Subscribe, like, comment, and all that crap, and I'll see you guys in the next video.